Okay, hi, we're going to talk about autoimmune disease. Now, there's a lot of autoimmune disease. Each one individually might not be that common, but all together, there's a lot of them, and it ends up being a lot of patients. Okay, first one we'll talk about multiple sclerosis, sort of a classic one affecting the neurologic system. And autoimmune disease like uh, multiple sclerosis presents with demyelination, loss of the myelin, insulation coating around the neurons of the brain. Um, lupus, very common one. By the way, most autoimmune diseases are more common in women. Why is that? Maybe the complexity of the estrogen system relating to immunity with regard to having babies. You know, having a baby is almost like having a transplant. And so a woman's immune system is more complex than a man's is. Um, we'll come back to all this stuff later. This is just introduction to autoimmune diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis of all the joints. Alopecia areata. I've had people come in asking me about hair loss. My advice? It'll surprise you, but becoming 100% vegan can help you keep all your hair. For avoiding autoimmune disease, alopecia areata, which is relatively uncommon, of course. It can be alopecia universalis, okay? The really famous vegetarian author, um, Cyrus, who from Mastering Diabetes, really smart guy, he had a problem with that that he talks about in his videos. Pernicious anemia, that's what causes vitamin B12 deficiency. That's autoimmune disorder. There's other causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, really common. I see that a lot in the ultrasounds. The ultrasound has this patchy pattern, looks like a giraffe compared to a normal uniform hyperechogenicity of a normal thyroid. Um, that famous guy Cyrus from Mastering Diabetes, he also had Hashimoto's. He's a real smart guy. You'll learn from him if you ever look him up if you're curious about that. Grave's disease, um, that's another type of hyperthyrotoxicosis, autoimmune disease with autoantibodies. You can check a lot of these diseases and they know they're autoimmune based on they'll uh, have detectable autoantibodies in the patient's blood. Uh, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, other autoimmune diseases. Now, let's get to some of the universal points. Autoimmune diseases tend to be more common in northern populations. If you look at global distribution of diseases for almost all these autoimmune diseases, you'll see they're way more common in northern areas. And then you ask yourself, well, why is that? One of the reasons, thought less sunshine, perhaps. So the persons tend to have less vitamin D. Could be. Sun's really good for you. In addition to increasing your vitamin D, the sunshine also activates all these nitric oxide precursors that are located subcutaneous. That's why you feel so good. You walk on the sun and go, gosh, this feels good. Because you're vasodilating all over the place. It's good for your body. And yeah, all your little sweat pores, when you sweat, you can think of them as being you know, miniature little sewers to drain the junk out of your body. You detox yourself you know, when you sweat, and that's a good thing. So running around outside in the sunshine is good for us. Another good thing is you ask yourself, what's my philosophical perspective on what makes a person healthy? And I could tell you after studying this for like 30 years, I think the best you can do is try to be like your ancestors from about 10,000 years ago. What do they do? They walked around a lot outside in the daytime, we're diurnal creatures, looking for food, sort of helping each other. Can you help me climb this tree, grab some fruit? Can you help me dig out this tuber, okay, get some food from the ground? So they were always getting a lot of exercise just by keeping busy and they were eating primarily plant foods, all right? Some people say, oh yeah, we ate a whole bunch of meat. No, don't kid yourself. I mean, look at us. We got no claws. We got no piercing fangs. If you're walking out in the forest and you see a dead animal on the side of the trail, you don't go, man, I can't wait to get down on my knees and take a bite out of that and drink its blood to its brains. That's disgusting, okay? If I put a bowl of fruit on a table, you salivate. You're made for that, okay? Our teeth are flat. Our jaw goes side to side to, ground, to grind plants. You look at a cat's mouth, it's got these giant fangs, it's got a real powerful fixed forward bite, so it's a much stronger bite. We um, can't make vitamin C because there's tons of it in plants. A uh, pure carnivore like a cat makes vitamin C. Anyways, northern populations, they tend to eat a lot more meat, which increases your risk of leaky gut. We talked about that. Saturated fat seems to facilitate uh, worsening leaky gut. And the big thing too, the meat lacks fiber. And the lack of fiber means that you get a different type of bacteria in your colon, for example. When you eat the fiber from plants, they produce short chain fatty acids, the most important one being butyrate, which is a four carbon fatty acid. Uh, and that butyrate feeds the colon lining cells, the enterocytes, which helps them to maintain their tight junctions. So those cells are tight up against each other. When you get those cells not able to maintain tight junctions, you get gaps between them. And that's when big particles of food, chunks of protein, can get into uh, 
your submucosal space, get into your blood, and your body will form antibodies to the big pieces of protein. Protein chunks coming from an animal are going to be similar to your own human proteins, and those antibodies which react to that meat piece of protein can cross-react to the body's own protein. So that's called molecular mimicry, meaning the sequence of amino acids in the animal protein being similar to those in the human, and then subsequent to that, antibody cross-reactivity means those antibodies cross-react and attack the person's own bodily tissues where they have amino acid sequences mimicking uh, the thing from the meat. Vegetable oils can also be damaging to the intestinal lining. Antibiotics can also disrupt the gut flora. Basically two main types of gut flora. The one for meat, because meat is basically protein and fat. Plant foods are basically carbohydrate and fiber. All right, well anyways, then I also wrote one thing up here, I wrote Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is an interesting neurologic disease and the reason it's relevant to autoimmune disease is it's not exactly clear its causation and it does have many features that mimic those of an autoimmune disease. It's more common in a relatively northern population. Uh, there's potentially a mechanism for it to spread. Actually it has a potential spread. You know, we'll talk about Parkinson's later, but just so you know, it potentially has an autoimmune component. And basically, why is this important? The reason it's important is to cure any disease. You need to know the cause of the disease, and then you try to avoid the cause. And now, you can't guarantee it's coming from leaky gut. Sometimes they don't know what's causing an autoimmune disease. But what I'm saying is, if I had an autoimmune disease myself or somebody in my family, the first thing I would try to do is reduce everything that can cause leaky gut. I try to make sure I got plenty of sunshine to get vitamin D. Whenever possible, it's better to get stuff the natural way. If possible, try to get your sunshine from standing out in the sun, okay? I stand out in the sun with my back to the sun like a solar panel, and my wife yells at me, says I'm lowering the property value. I don't care. I know it's the right thing. I think that's part of being a man, is learn how to ignore your wife, you know, so you do whatever has to be done. Um, what else here? Well, I think that's the key point. We'll talk about some of these diseases individually later, but optimizing all these things, you can avoid a lot of the known risk factors for autoimmune disease, and hopefully that's helpful for you.